Thanks so much, Kyle and Chris. It was so great to chat with y'all. Now, let's dive into today's main discussion, balancing business and the arts. Our moderator for today's conversation is Stephanie Lupinacci, Senior Manager of Social Impact at RBC. With a focus on the arts and the Emerging Artists Project, Stephanie has been in the corporate social responsibility field for over 15 years and has a breadth of experience in both the nonprofit and for-profit sectors. She's dabbled in the creative industry, having studied creative advertising, and even started a few of her own businesses. Her real passion, though, is connecting people one-on-one -on -one, and is always looking for opportunities to cross-collaborate, build bigger, stronger partnerships and ecosystems for the artistic community. I'll hand it over to you now, Stephanie. Thank you so much, Ian, for that thoughtful introduction. I'm so excited to be here today to guide this very important conversation around being both an artist and an entrepreneur and discussing what it means to balance both a creative career and a growing business. I have an incredible group of experts joining me here today. And it's my pleasure to welcome our panelists who will be sharing their unique insights and experiences within the industry. So let's start off with some quick introductions. And uh, first, I want to start off with Ashley Potavin. Um, yeah, hi, thanks for having me. Um, so I, I've been in the music business for probably going on 15 years or so. Um, and uh, I, I've been day one management team with, with Pop Artist Lights. And uh, I'm also on the management team with Arkells. Great. And Milka, why don't I head over to you? Hi, thanks for having me. Um, so I uh, own a PR agency here in Toronto, Conversation Agency. I've been in the PR world for about 20 years now um, and also PR program instructor at the Remix Project, which is a cultural incubator, um, really helps educate and provide support to young people from underserved communities. Wonderful. And last but certainly not least, uh, Tina. Hi, hi everyone. Um, my name is Tina Pereira and I'm a professional ballerina with the National Ballet of Canada. I've been dancing with them for uh, almost 20 years now. And I'm also the owner and founder of Ballerina Couture Dancewear, which is a high-end dancewear company. Perfect, thank you all for those introductions. Uh, we've got a lot of interesting topics to cover uh, today. So why don't we uh, dig in and uh, get started? So for the first question for you all uh, today, acknowledging that being an artist and being in the artist industry, at some point, uh, many of the artists have become entrepreneurs or may uh, embark upon an initiative that causes them to pivot into uh, parlaying into their own business. I wonder if some of you or if you all of you could speak to how do does an artist begin to translate their work from expression to a sellable product or service. Um, and Ashley, why don't we start with you? Yeah, from the music management side of things, um, we're often one of the first team members uh, that an artist tries to fill. And um, one thing that we're often looking for is what makes somebody unique and, and helps them carve out a particular spot um, in their lane and what makes them special. Um, and, and often um, it takes an outside perspective sometimes to really offer that, that excitement uh, to know what you want to go after. So um, in terms of uh, venturing into a sellable product, um, it, it's really honing in on uh, why your product is, is going to stand out at that particular moment and building a path forward from there. Milka, your thoughts? Yeah, I think for us on the PR side, um, we're the opposite of where um, where we sort of come in at the tail end of when they're ready uh, to, to start selling their product or service. So really making sure that they are ready to start um, and that we have something to work with in terms of selling that product or service for them. And uh, Tina, for you, I know that you've got such a unique perspective as well as, as being a dancer or a career dancer, but then also starting your own or pivoting to your own business. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, yeah, I think it's um, important for every artist uh, to consider, but especially dancers, considering our careers are so short. Um, 
luckily for some dancers nowadays, there are online platforms like TikTok and Instagram where, um, you know, via influencer programs, you're able to monetize on that. So I feel like being um, on social media and having a presence there is just a perfect way to start. Um, if you're starting from scratch, not necessarily doing something in your field, I think um, branching into um, something you're already sort of familiar with, playing off of your passions and um, finding, you know, projects, things that you can immerse yourself in and uh, feel passionate about is just a good way to start, just to maybe gather ideas of where you'd like to go. Um, and next, I think it's just finding a sellable product or something that's um, going to be useful to others, I think is also really important in honing into starting your own business. Mm -hmm. And I love what you say about around the passion uh, that you are committing to too, is that I think that's so important is yes, you want to create a sellable product, but I think you need to be passionate about it yourself. Uh, because that always comes through. Um, so now in saying that, you know, what are some of the basic steps uh, you would recommend artists take before starting to sell? Um, and Ashley, why don't we uh, head back to you here on this one? Sure. Yeah, we, we often look at um, these artist ecosystems as, as um, a small business where everybody has their role to play and, uh, mm -hmm. and brings you perspective. And so building out a team is is obviously really crucial in figuring out what those team members do and, um, you know, how you negotiate uh, what you're giving to them in exchange for the services that they're providing. So in the, in the case of music, you often start with management agent label and having um, uh, people in, in your corner uh, fulfilling sort of a mentorship role to help you navigate building that team is really, really important. Um, you know, you, you can be really excited at day one and, and, and it's important to have people um, remind you to practice patience to make proper decisions. Um, you don't want to uh, necessarily commit to a, a plan for too long, sign away too many albums, things like that. It's, it's really important to preach um, looking beyond uh, Canada as well and thinking about how you can diversify your audience and and target different audiences um, early on and not limit yourself. So um, I think the more uh, diverse viewpoints you can have in your team to help open your mind to how you want to grow and 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 know the options for you is is really important. And um, and then ideally uh, having a lot of trust in those people because you're you're on a pretty personable ride for a long time right um, so uh, I would say step one is is building that team that is going to help help, help you lean in and, and guide you along the way um, because there's lots of time to make mistakes <laughs> there's there's lots of time to kind of to, to, to dig in and, and, and learn yourself. Um, but if, if you can get any headway from experts to make sure that you're not committing to something that you don't necessarily have the foresight to know you don't want to commit to, that that's also really helpful. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, acknowledging that a lot of our audience today are, you know, emerging talent, uh, just starting out in the industry or, or mid-career uh, talent, you know, when you talk about ensuring that your team or building a team that you trust, is there certain points in your career that you should make sure that you have that team in place? Like, do you recommend early onset? Do you recommend, you know, when you've got a little bit more of an audience to start putting things into place? Uh, is there a key timing that you should be, or that they should be considering, you know, what to kind of gather their team? Um, yeah, if you're if you're fortunate enough that you know you might have a lot of interest um, in your project early, then that that's a, a different type of excitement where you you need to practice a little more patience. Um, the the grind is different, and uh, you you might be in a you have much more leverage to hold on to things as well. Um, it's you know ownership is a big conversation that that is coming up more and more and more these days, especially with so much sort of UGC, you know, options available to artists to get get their music or content out there. Um, and if you, uh, you know, have heat in any particular area, it's going to help um, help you climb, climb that ladder a lot faster. And you also want to 
um, really protect what makes that special and, and protect your voice. Um, so if, if, you know, you've, you've carved out a path where you own your own music and it's, it's, it's doing well and you're finding an audience, um, then when you're in those label deal conversations, you have a lot more flexibility to speak um, internationally, to speak to um, holding on to certain rights, to, uh, you know, hold on to touring when you get there because you're not asking for as much support from day one. It's all a give and take of um, w which you're going to give to get something back. But but that said, I find there's often a lot of like cautionary narrative out there or, um, you know, some people might think uh, labels, labels are evil if you can do it without them or things like that. And I really do think like if you are working with the right people, the, the it's strength in numbers as well, right? Like you want um, to have passionate people around you that really get it. So uh, if you're fortunate enough that that team is growing, then it's, it's great to latch onto that as well and embrace the strengths that they can bring to the table. Perfect. I think that's so helpful. And Milka, I want to turn it over to you because I know this is a large part of what you do in working with artists within the organizations you work with and in your PR industry is, you know, what are some key fundamentals that they should be considering uh, as they start to, to nurture their businesses or develop them? Um, so just to really uh, add to what Ashley had said as well is, you know, I think it's really important to understand your market um your presence within that market and also um understand your value i think it's really important um, for people to you know do some research um before you take that necessary step and understand where you'd like to be um, so that you have a goal perfect and now when you say because i for me i've always like you know i always want to know the nitty gritty so when you say do your research for that market we, how do you do that so just let's let's think that you know nobody knows nothing about anything um where do i start or how do i start to begin to know about you know that market that i want to uh, delve into like where's the easiest way or place to go to to get that information i think there's a lot of um you know there's a lot of help online i mean you know Places like the Remix Project are really important for, for people to be able to call and lean on um, for information. Um, you know, I think, you know, really searching online to see what, which industry you're in, you know, who, who's there to support you within that industry. Um, but there's definitely a lot of, a lot of help out there. Um, and, you know, people are willing to help. I think also if, you know, you want to do your own research, really looking at, you know, who are your peers within that market or that industry um, that have been successful and how have they gotten there, you know, really sort of doing research around them and understanding the market and seeing who they've worked with and potentially, you know, touching base with some of those people as well. It's, it's, don't be shy. I've made some really crazy calls in my uh, career and they've been proven to be very successful. So, mm -hmm. And I think that's such an important point um, because people love to talk about themselves. And I think if you just ask the question or you just open up that dialogue, people are a lot more forthcoming with information than you would expect them to be. So I think that's uh, a perfect point there. And why don't we head over to Tina to get your thoughts on, you know, what are some of the basics or the fundamentals that you should know when starting a business? Um, well, I guess from my point of view, it's more uh, focused on product. So um, I can't emphasize enough the old adage of uh, measure twice, cut once, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, it's so important, um, you know, uh, for example, in manufacturing, it's the only time in life where I'm completely pessimistic <laughs> and I look for everything that could possibly go wrong because chances are there are more things than you know um, from experience myself. So I feel like uh, look at every single angle before you go into anything like production. It's so important. Um, also, I think um, something that's really hard for um, people that are starting a business is maybe having um, contracts and having these hard conversations with um, people that you employ. It's so important because on the note of things going wrong too, it's the percentage is way higher of things going wrong than them going perfectly. So I think protecting yourself and having um, 
that in place will give everybody the peace of mind um, moving forward. Um, but I think the most important part is just really uh, having a product that you can stand behind and that you feel confident about because uh, also first impressions when you first put yourself out into the market is really important. So we really want to be ready to impress. <laughs> That, and that's perfect, right? And I think that's such solid advice. Measure, measure twice, cut once. Uh, I know I'm always at least when I make my tasty when I make my decisions. So uh, I think it's we always have to remind ourselves of that. Um, so acknowledging that you know within the arts industry, 52 percent of artists end up being on their own entrepreneurs or starting their own businesses or being their own businesses, and that's like comparable to Canadians. That's only 12 percent. So it's the vast majority more that have their own businesses. Um, and they may not have uh, intended to start their own business or be their own business. So how can we uh, help our, the artists or inform our audiences today on how they can best develop their business acumen? Because within your own business of being an entrepreneur, there's so many different things that you have to be aware of that you necessarily weren't uh, intending to, to know about. Um, so how can they help develop their, how can we help develop their business acumen? Um, and uh, increase their education in this uh, field? Yeah, I mean, I think not everyone's obviously born with a business IQ. Um, I really always say educate, strategize, and implement. So again, I, I sort of repeat myself in this whole educational part, but you, you should always educate yourself in anything that you're doing in life. Um, really understand, you know, where to start. There's great online service Canada for instance it takes minutes to register your own business um, you know start there it, it feels great when you hit that register button and you now have an officially <laughs> registered business um, and then take it from there like Ashley said like you don't have to start big I think um, there's a lot of resources like I mentioned earlier available to you but you know tap into interns interns have been vital to my business, you know, I started off my career as an intern. Um, it's it's a valuable tool for both you and the intern. Um, so I think taking advantage of that and, and really, you know, providing an opportunity for somebody, but they're also you know helping you along the way. Um, and then strategize together. You know, what are your next steps? You know, what what steps do you need to implement? Um, you know develop a little bit of a business plan. It doesn't have to be that very uh, word that people think of. It's just, you know, putting it on paper so you can visualize it and how to get there. And then you can sort of, um, you know, implement and action those items. Why don't we uh, head it over to Tina now? Because I know you've just gone through this and so you probably have some really good insights for the audience here today. Uh, absolutely. I think, um, like these ladies were saying, I think, uh, first of all, just starting with your network is the best place. Um, and I think um, if you have a good idea of what you think you would like to do, maybe reach out to somebody who's already doing that. I think there's just no better way to learn than from somebody who's actually in the business that you want to be in. But if you don't know anybody, I think reaching out to your network and then just seeing maybe where that could go with people that could maybe put you in touch with people. Um, for me, for example, um, I actually, I had the idea of my dance work company, but it didn't really come to life until actually I was in a side project doing a photo shoot and I sort of saw what that could look like for me and I sort of pieced things together and um, I, I really had that opportunity to see what that would look like and that was really appealing to me. Um, also, I think people really underestimate how much it takes or how many different facets there are to running a business and I think um, the sooner you get to know what those things are um, the better because guaranteed there are going to be at least 20% of things you just hate doing <laughs> or that you don't feel comfortable or that you feel are beyond you so um, it's just good to know all sides of the business that you're going into. And so I think if you can find somebody that is doing that, you're, you're really lucky, but maybe you can piece things together and um, with different recommendations and sort of get there one way or another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that, that's key and so helpful. Um, and now since we're on the topic of business strategy, uh, you know, how can artists 
uh, evaluate their business and refine their strategy before reaching out to potential investors or partners? Or is there any key information that they should prepare in advance when reaching? Yeah, um, I think it's helpful to um, always keep your goals in mind and learn the goals of that particular party or investor that you're approaching and figure out how you can align. Um, all of this, you know, is, is, is a bit of a teamwork interaction with, with give and take. Um, and there needs to be a common place to, to start that conversation and figuring, uh, you know, really knowing your audience and knowing their audience and how you can collaborate best um, on, on something that feels like it's one plus one equals three, you know, um, often, uh, depending who you're going after, they have a lot of people trying to get their attention. So, um, the more prepared you can be, um, with information and data to really present yourself in a favorable way to show what you can bring to the table, um, is, is really strong, but it's also important to, um, keep in mind, uh, that that you're really valuable uh, in in this you know interaction and and know that um, you you have options and you want to be working with people that support you right and so uh, always keep in mind you have the upper hand and when it comes to your art and um, you know how to speak to it best and then just figure out what it is about them that's going to make that grow. Perfect, Milka, your uh, thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I think in our industry, it's really important to develop a media kit. Um, you know, this is uh, something that I'm asked for daily, um, you know, whether it be wor we working with artists or influencers or whoever, um, where's their media kit, you know? Um, so really sort of put this together. It's it's super easy document, really just explaining who you are, you know, what is your product and service that you're offering? Um, you know, why you, what are you doing that's different? Um, you know, be creative with it. You know, I get some that, you know, I can tell took a couple of minutes to throw together. And then I get some that are really great um, that I spend time on and I actually read through. So I think that's your, your voice um, when, when you're not actually speaking to somebody, right? So um really spending the time on creating a media kit um, that you can pitch yourself uh through um and it's okay if you don't have any press um it's just it's really a who are you document um and why you um, so and then as you evolve that media kit gets bigger and better over time and uh, now tina your thoughts around uh you know what they should, uh, information should artists prepare in advance or how can they help define their strategy? Um, yeah, I think the very first thing is probably um, your target audience, figuring out who you're selling to if you have a tangible product. I think that's really important, mm -hmm. um, especially as you continue to grow and then you um, get into marketing and that sort of thing. You, you have to be clear about who your audience is. Um, that also you know, dictates the rest of your uh, your branding, how that's going to look and that sort of thing. So knowing that um, is, uh, I guess, your first step to then sort of develop uh, your plan around that. Um, I also think um, experience is paramount um, because you really want to know the ins and outs of your business. You want to know the ups and the downs and the highs and the lows and the timing of everything so that when you do present something, it's a it's a it's a well-rounded experience. It's not uh, it's not something that you want to dive into really soon. Um, also, you want to have an idea of um, what you would if you're taking on investors, investors, for example, what you're willing to give away, and just that sort of step is kind of more down the line. But I think the very uh, first step is just having your product out there and then having the experience and just riding the waves of business for a while before you bring anybody else on. And I guess just a more personal question, as you were starting out, was there uh, tools or a specific place that you started to gather your your information to start to develop your business? Or did you have someone help you kind of navigate this new uh, pathway for yourself? Um, well, like I mentioned, I had that photo shoot experience um, in a in a 
uh, manufacturing facility that sort of opened my eyes um, to it. And it gave me, um, yeah, an example of what it could look like. But from there, I sort of had to do my own research, reach out to my own people and figure out where I fit in, into that and where my strengths are and um, that sort of thing. Uh, we know that knowing people or knowing how to get in or how to navigate those networks is so imperative. Um, I think I just read something last week is that 85% of all uh, or most jobs are filled by uh, having the ability to access the right networks and 75% of jobs are filled by having the right connection. So it is so key. And, and knowing that, do you have any advice around building a networking strategy? Um, should artists have clear numbers or goals in around that? Um, is it something that they need to be strategic about or do those relationships, should those relationships evolve organically? Um, so why don't we head back to um, Ashley here? Um, yeah, I think um, I was thinking when Milka mentioned, you know, building that media kit uh, from the get go and, and over time it gets better. Um, it, you, you often come up with, with a network um, of different types of creatives that, um, that you feel like you, there's a give and take with everybody's start, be it photographers, um, you know, uh, new, new people at a label, things like that. And, and remembering that you're all growing together and move around a lot. The industry is really small. And, um, and as, as you network and navigate it, um, you're often working through different spheres of the industry together. Um, and there's also, you know, an authenticity to that network. Those early people that you find and build with, um, they know where you come from. They know what, what you're into, what you're trying to communicate, um, what you're passionate about. And um, if you really know what's authentic to you and know your audience and how you're authentically connecting to that audience, um, that, that will you know, move, move around a certain type of network to, to find the right kind of people. Um, that's perfect. And now, uh, Milka, I want to head to you because I know you had mentioned something earlier on around don't be shy and reach out. And so I think uh, I would love to hear kind of your thoughts around building that networking strategy. strategy. And is it a strategy or is it organic and how to do that? Yeah, I think this is my favorite topic to talk about. Um, I tell my students at the Remix Project all the time. I'm like, networking internships are number one. I, I wouldn't be here today if I didn't network the way I did, if I didn't intern the way I did, if I didn't put the time um, into myself the way I did. Um, I'm always available to my students. I, I think it's really important to be. Um, you know, they still call me to to this day, but when I was um, growing up and, and uh, starting my career, I really leaned on a lot of people and I, I made sure, as shy as I am, uh, I made sure I picked up the phone and, you know, made those calls and, you know, built those relationships over time. I think there's not enough to be said about just dropping a note to say hello uh, to people. Exactly, and picking up that phone, make that phone call. Mm -hmm. um, even if the internship's not posted, call. Um, see if they're if they're interested in taking you on. Or I think the mm -hmm. phone's a valuable space <laughs> that we tend to forget about. <laughs> yeah, it's novel these days. Instead of a, a voice yeah. call, instead of a text message, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, perfect. And now, Tina, how about uh, over to you? Uh, what are your thoughts around networking and building a strategy? Um, I think it's uh, very important. Um, definitely, uh, it's for me um, extremely important to use platforms, social media pa platforms like Instagram and um, TikTok. All of these things that provide a really creative platform for me to express. Um, you know, what my product is and that sort of thing. I think the dance world in general is so small to begin with that um, being connected, um, even on Instagram, you can reach dancers, you know, in every dance company around the world, which is incredible, um, which wasn't necessarily the case before. And even further now, you can sell your products on, on Instagram. So you have um, the potential to be seen by the world and then also to sell, which is incredible. Um, so I think leveraging your social network platforms is um, super important. And uh, 
like what Ashley and Mocha were saying earlier, it's you can just start small. It's so easy to get so discouraged on social media, but just start small and try to be consistent because even if it's just a matter of leaving a comment on uh, one of your favorite dancers' pages or just, um, you know, sending a message or reaching out uh, at your comfort zones, something like that can go a really long way. Um, and I think it, it really is though important to be authentic with the growth of these relationships so that they can, you know, last a lifetime and be helpful uh, for you. But I think, um, you know, how we connect nowadays is like not necessarily picking up the phone or leaving a voicemail, but um, you can do complimentary things too, like leaving a message or a comment is something um, small, but it's a way just to sort of forge a relationship that maybe can blossom in the future and be helpful for you. And perhaps um, something I like to do also uh, is with my fellow dancer entrepreneurs to do collaborations with them because then that way you reach two audiences at one time or uh, host giveaways, that sort of thing gets a lot of attention to your page. So there actually are a lot of uh, free options uh, that are still hopefully going to remain free for the next couple of a foreseeable future but um there's a lot of power in leveraging your social media so i think um if you have a good um if your your brand messaging is strong and everything like that is set up it's a good time to just start reaching out mm -hmm. and, and i think you're right i mean even on social on your social media networks uh the power of engagement is key um so if you don't know those individuals uh, but you want to get to know them as you said, put a pop a comment in their in their photo and do it consistently over and over again because there's that relationship that can start to build and you start to feel like you know that person digitally. Um, and so if you're consistent about it, and, and I always use the story is, you know, one time I saw somebody on social media I was engaging with and I looked at her and I went to go hug her. This is pre-COVID because I felt like I knew her because I engage with her so much on social. And then we both paused because we really didn't know each other. <laughs> and then we went in for the hug anyway. So it is powerful. Um, but yeah, absolutely, that level of consistency. And, and why not do both, right? Do everything you can. If you're starting to work, if you're starting out, like pick up the phone, make that, try and make that physical contact, but also be relevant and engaging online on the social networks uh, as well. Um, and I think in doing that, I want to move into the, you know, the next question here is that, you know, are there certain professionals um, that artists should be thinking about reaching out to specifically? So should it be uh, diverse in nature? Uh, should it be other artists in their industry? Should it be other professionals that they should be thinking about that maybe, maybe they're not thinking about? Ashley, what are you, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think, um, looking to people that you admire and the path that they've taken and and trying to learn how they got there is really important and and i like what tina was saying about leaving comments on people's social media or, or just small nuggets of outreach because you never know um, if that might open a lane of communication because often people are quite open and willing to talk even if it's um you know just an opinion on on, on a song or or if you think an idea is good um, or if you're trying to um choose between two types of uh, professionals or a label or a photographer or something and you know someone's worked with them in the past, like just opening up those lines of communication um, is, is, is the most firsthand way you can learn anything because obviously real world feedback from people that um, know people is, is the most helpful step forward. Perfect, perfect. And your thoughts, Mocha, on that? Yeah, to add to that, I think it's really, um, challenge your status quo align with people who can challenge your perspective and approach um i think is really really important um even the smartest most educated person at one time didn't have the knowledge that they do today um you know they worked hard at it they aligned with the right people um so i think it's it's really ensuring you do that and remember that we, we don't know we don't all start at the top Right? We've got to work our no. way up there. So it's always good, good narrative to keep in our mind. Um, and now, Tina, as you started to kind of build and grow your business, were there um, people or professionals that you needed to reach out to that you didn't think would necessarily be part of your team or that you, you needed to broaden your network in and around um, that other artists should be thinking about as well? Um, yeah, I think everybody's different in business with their strengths and their weaknesses, but I think the first step is knowing what yours are. I think, mm -hmm. 
like sort of what I touched base on earlier, there are so many facets and there are going to be things that you just, you know, really hate doing. Like, for example, um, I think I'm a designer, but I'm really like packaging leotards and I'm bookkeeping and I'm doing all of these things that I never, you know, anticipated doing. And um, uh, with my experience, I've really realize the things that just take up way too much of my time that I'm not qualified to do, um, like bookkeeping, bookkeeping, for example. So I think having people in place or just starting to reach out to people that can um, take away some of your, um, you know, your biggest hurdles, the things that are slowing you down in your business. Obviously, this is something for the future, because when you're first starting off, you absolutely have to do everything yourself because there are just so many costs involved. But I think once you get to a good point where you're ready to grow, I think that's a really good point to uh, sort of reassess where you're at and to think of um, your time management and what's important to your day to get done and how uh, what's slowing you down and what's um, really valuable um, for you to do yourself in your own business. Well, that brings us to the end of the discussion. Um, many thanks to our wonderful guests and panelists that are here with us today. And thank you for sharing uh, your knowledge with us. I hope these insights have been super valuable to our viewers and to the emerging artist community specifically. Uh, we look forward to connecting with you again on the next episode. And I will pass things back over to you, Ian. Thanks.